Welcome to the design and control of concrete mixtures. We will be covering Chapter 3, Portland Blended and Other Hydraulic Cement. Portland cements are hydraulic cements composed primarily of hydraulic calcium silicates. Portland cement is so named because in its final state it resembles the color of the premier building stone of England, Portland limestone. Portland cement is manufactured by combining precise proportions of raw materials. This table lists the predominant sources of raw materials used in the manufacture of Portland cement. This image here shows an aerial view of a cement plant. Cement manufacturing can be broken into four stages. During stage one, selected raw materials are transported from the quarry and crushed to the size of a typical gravel. During stage two, the stone is then milled and proportioned so that the resulting mixture has the desired chemical composition. Step three, after blending, the ground raw material materials are fed into the upper end of a kiln. Fuel is forced into the lower end of the kiln where it ignites and generates material temperatures of 1400 to 1550 degrees Celsius or 2550 to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. In the kiln, a number of chemical reactions occur. Burning changes the raw mix into clinker. In the first stage, water is driven from the powder 700 degrees Celsius or 1290 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, the carbon dioxide in the limestone is driven off in a process called calcination, 700 to 900 degrees Celsius, 1290 degrees to 1650 degrees Fahrenheit. In this stage, the first calcium silicates are nucle nucleating to form C2S or be light. Next, the material becomes sticky and the temperature increases rapidly. Once the mixture reaches 1250 degrees Celsius, 2280 degrees Fahrenheit, the liquid phase forms and the free calcium oxide and the expanding crystals of be light form a new phase, C3S, also called a light. At peak temperatures between 1350 and 1450 degrees Celsius, 2460 and 2640 degrees Fahrenheit, the C2S continues to react with the free lime to form more alite. Additionally, nodules form as the liquid agglomerates crystals together forming clinker. Upon cooling, tricalcium aluminate C3A and tetracalcium aluminophyrite C4AF form. The final product from the kiln is called clinker. Clinker is rapidly cooled and then pulverized into a fine material in the final stage of cement manufacturing. During this operation, small amounts of gypsum are added mostly to regulate the setting time of the cement. Limestone and and inorganic processing additions may also be added, each in amounts up to 5% by mass. Organic processing additions may be added in amounts up to 1% by mass. The cement industry's role in sustainability includes the use of alternative raw materials, land stewardship, solid waste reduction, reduction of energy and fuel, and use of tire-derived fuel. Many cement plants utilize industrial byproducts and wastes in the manufacturing, manufacture of At the end of their useful life, cement quarries can be reclaimed as parks, recreational areas, or other developments. The sunken garden at the Butcher Gardens in Victoria, British Columbia, was once a limestone quarry for cement production. Byproducts generated during cement making are either recycled into the process or used in other beneficial applications. Cement kiln dust, CKD, is removed from the kiln exhaust gases by 
pollution control devices. This figure shows energy consumption data from 1974 to 2008. The cement industry has improved energy efficiency by 37% from 1972. The average energy input required is 4.53 million BTU per metric ton. In 2007, the energy obtained from waste fuels increased to 9.4% of the total energy demand at cement plants. Tires have 25% more fuel value than coal on an equal mass basis and approximately 300 million used tires are generated annually in the United States. Portland cements are manufactured to meet the specifications of ASTM C150 or AASHTO M85. The requirements of those these two standards are equivalent and provide for 10 types of Portland cement. Type 1 Portland cement is a general purpose cement suitable for all use, uses where the special properties of other cement types are not required. Its uses in concrete include pavements, floors, bridges, and Type 2 Portland cement is used where pr protection against moderate sulfate, sulfate attack is necessary. Sulfates in moist soil or water may enter the concrete and react with the hydrated C3A resulting in expansion, scalding, and cracking of concrete. Moderate, moderate sulfate resistant cements and high sulfate resistant cements improve the sulfate resistance of concrete elements such as slabs, on ground pipe, and concrete posts exposed to high sulfate soil. The table shows types of cement required for concrete exposed to sulfates in soil or water. Type 2 cement has moderate sulfate resistance properties because it contains no more than 8% tricalcium aluminate. Additionally, concrete exposed to seawater is often made with type 2 cement. This graph shows the performance of concretes made with different cements in sulfate soil. Type 2 and type 5 cements have lower C3A contents that improve sulfate resistance. The vertical axis is a visual rating in which a higher number means more deterioration. Improved sulfate resistant res resistance results from low water to cementaceous material materials ratios as demonstrated over time for concrete beams exposed to sulfate soils in a wetting and drying environment. Shown are average values for concretes containing a wide range of cementaceous materials, including cement types 1, 2, and 5, blended cements, poslins, and slags. Type 2, MH, and type 4 cements are manufactured to generate heat at a slower rate than most other cements. Moderate heat and low heat cements minimize heat generation in massive elements or structures such as at the left very thick bridge supports and at the right dams. Ho Hoover Dam shown here use, used a type 4 cement to control temperature rise. Type 4 cements are not commonly manufactured in North America as there are other as are other more economical measures for controlling heat rise in concrete. Type 3 Portland cement provides strength at an earlier period than normally expected. High early strength cements are used where early concrete strength is needed, such as in left to right cold weather concreting, fast track paving to minimize traffic congestion, and rapid form removal for precast concrete. Type 5 Portland cement is used in concrete exposed to severe sulfate environments principally where soils or groundwaters have high sulfate content, content. Specimens used in the outdoor sulfate test plot in Sacramento, California are 150 by 150 by 760 millimeters or 6 by 6 by 30 inches beams. A comparison of ratings is illustrated at left 
a rating of 5 for 12-year-old concretes made with type 5 cement and a water to cement ratio of 0.65 and at the right a rating of 2 for 16-year-old concretes made with type 5 cement and a water to ratio or to cement ratio of 0.37 Specific specifications for four types of air and training Portland cement are given in ASTM C150 and AASHTO M85. They correspond in, co in composition to ASTM types 1, 2, 3, MH, and 2, except that small quantities of air and training additions are interground with the clinker during manufacture. These cements produce concrete with improved resistance to freezing and thawing. Air entrainment for concrete is generally achieved through the use of an air entraining admixture rather than through the use of air entraining cements.